okay, this is the solution to a past midterm exam problem involving calculating the hydrostatic forces on flat surfaces, in other words, on plane gates. This is the problem statement. It's taken from the fall 2019 midterm. Water at 998 kilograms per cubic meter is contained behind a rigid L-shaped gate. So A, B, C here. The gate has a depth of half a meter into the page, and the gate rotates about a hinge at point A. And you're told in the problem statement to neglect the weight of the gate, so we're only considering hydrostatic forces. Now, for some reason, I find that many students are reluctant to draw a free body diagram, even though it's essential to solve the problem. So I've made it an explicit requirement in part A to uh, draw a fully labeled free body diagram, and I think it was worth two marks out of the 10 for that. Then in part B, we have to calculate the minimum vertical force applied over here at point B to keep the gate from swinging open. Just to be 100% clear, the gate ABC is one rigid part and rotates about the hinge at point A. So this is what we're trying to prevent with the vertical force at point B. So starting with the free body diagram, here's the gate ABC floating freely in space. This is really a simple statics problem. What we're going to do is put all the forces on the gate, then take moments about some convenient point to find the force at B. For static equilibrium, the sum of the moments about any point on the gate will be zero. So don't forget to put the hinge forces on the diagram. Indeed, that's why we will eventually take moments at the hinge at point A, because we don't know the hinge forces. We don't know FAX and FAY. And by taking moments at A where those forces don't have any moment, we can avoid calculating them. Now let's consider the hydrostatic forces. We have the hydrostatic force on horizontal surface AB, and we have the hydrostatic force on this vertical surface BC. Here's the pressure distribution on the horizontal surface AB. The force is upward and uniform. It's a uniform pressure on this surface because the depth of the surface is constant. And from the geometry here, you can see this height is 2 meters, and this is 0.9 meters, so this surface will be at a constant depth of 1.1 meters. So we can represent this pressure distribution by a force, FAB, that's located at the center of surface AB, so at L1 upon 2. Here's the pressure distribution on the vertical surface on BC. Of course, it increases linearly with the depth. So FBC acts to the right and is located below the centroid of BC. So we will eventually have to calculate the location of the center of pressure, or YCP, in order to locate that force. The absolute value of YCP is the distance that FBC is below the centroid. For completeness, I've shown the force at point C. The problem statement asks for the minimum force at point B to hold the gate closed. With the minimum force, the gate will be just starting to open so the force at point C will be zero for the minimum value of the force at point B. In other words, when point C is just starting to lift off the surface. So that's the answer to part A. That's the complete, fully labeled free body diagram. Oh yeah, one other thing. It's a common student error to put the forces on the problem diagram over here. If you draw on the diagram, that's not a proper free body diagram. You need to draw a separate diagram with the gate floating freely in space. So now for part B, to find the force at B, all we need to do is calculate and locate the hydrostatic forces for our free body diagram. Starting with the horizontal surface AB here, the vertical pressure force on this surface is the specific weight of water the depth of the centroid of that surface, which is constant for the entire surface, 
the depth of the centroid is just the depth of the surface, times the surface area of AB. We can see from simple geometry that the depth of this surface AB is 1.1 meters. So we can make the substitution, 9790 newtons per meter cubed, the specific weight of water. Here's our 1.1 meters, the depth of the centroid of that surface. And here's the surface area of AB, noting that the depth of this gate into the page is half a meter. This results in an upward force of 4,308 newtons, which acts directly at the center of surface AB. Now looking at the force on surface BC, again, it's the gamma of water, the depth of the centroid, and the surface area of surface BC. Again, from straightforward geometry, we get that the depth of the center of surface BC is 1.55 meters. So we can just make the substitutions. The specific weight of water, here's our 1.55 meters, the depth of the centroid of that surface. And then the surface length is L2 is 0 0.9 meters. And the depth is half a meter, so the area is 0 0.45 meters squared. Performing the multiplication, we get 6,828 newtons acting to the right. The final piece of information needed to complete this problem is to locate the center of pressure of the force FBC. In other words, it's a line of action. I've shown here a elevation view of surface BC. The center of pressure for the force on this surface is located here. It's located a distance YCP below the centroid, where YCP is given by this expression. IXX is the second moment of area of the gate's surface around this horizontal axis. Theta is the angle that the vertical surface makes with the free surface, which is 90 degrees. HCG is the depth of the centroid of this surface relative to the free surface. And ABC is just the area of that surface. For a rectangular gate, the second moment of area around the centroid is just the width times the height cubed divided by 12. So making the substitutions, this gate has a width into the page of half a meter. Its height is 0 0.9 meters cubed divided by 12, and we get a second moment of area of 0 0.03037 meters to the fourth. So now we can make the substitutions into this expression to get YCP. Here's the second moment of area we just calculated, the sine of 90 degrees because we have a vertical gate. The depth of the centroid of the center of surface BC, as we discussed before, is 1.55 meters. And the area of this surface is 0 0.45 meters squared. And so when we crunch the numbers, you get 0 0.4355 meters where the negative sign here indicates that the center of pressure is located below the centroid of the surface. So now we have all the forces and their locations. So we can simply apply these to the free body diagram. So this is just the free body diagram from part A and I've inserted all the values for the forces and the distances. So now what we're going to do is take moments about the hinge at A in order to determine the force FB. The sum of the moments about A for static equilibrium will be zero, and I'm going to take moments in the clockwise direction as positive. Taking moments, FB is a clockwise moment, so it's positive, and it has a moment arm of L1. FAB is a counterclockwise moment, so it's negative, and it has moment arm of L2 upon 2. And FBC, it has a moment arm of YCP plus L2 upon 2. And we get this expression here. We can solve this expression for the unknown force, FB. So making the substitutions for the forces, we have FAB times its moment arm, 0.4 meters, 
FBC times its moment arm, which you can see, divided by the moment arm for FB, which is 0.8 meters. And we get that the minimum force required to hold the gate closed is 6,370 newtons downward. And that's the answer. I thought I'd end by showing you an interesting floating phenomenon, which is caused at least in part by hydrostatic pressure. You've probably heard it said that small, heavier than water objects like a steel razor blade can float on water because of surface tension. But that's really only part of the story. There are actually two forces at play. One is the surface tension force on the edge of the blades, which we talked about in chapter one. But as I've shown here, uh, the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom surface of the blade also plays a big role. Let me start this short video, which shows the important role of the hydrostatic force on the bottom surface. It starts with a floating razor blade, which I fully submerge. Then I take a pipette and make a small puff of air. The air blows the water off the top surface of the blade and the hydrostatic force on the blade's lower surface makes it float back up to the surface. It's quite an unusual effect. And that completes this video.